first to thank uh, Representative Kim Fine for that very much. And i um, just like to say that I, in, in getting involved in this, I had the chance to meet a real good friend, and that's Brad Hayes here at the Naval Air Museum, Barbers Point. Um, great guy, terrific Marine. Um, I learned the meaning of Semper Fi from this guy. And I just want to say personally for me that this has been about part of what the, and I'm not a Marine at all, but just the idea that uh, in the Marine Code is that no one and no Marines are left behind. And I've always felt that these people were left behind. And it's time they got their um, uh, recognition, and I'm just glad finally they have. So thanks very much. Mr. Ramsey Hishinuma, uh, witness to the attack on this air station. Thank you. I uh, consider myself a survivor uh, for the attack of Pearl Harbor. Believe it or not, uh, I don't know where Everett is, but uh, we were having a picnic on Saturday night, December 6th. A dozen of us camped at, used to be Hall Bush, now they call it Oneula Park. I don't know what direction that is because I've never been here. In that direction? Well, we were having a fantastic time, marshmallows, hot dog so forth, having a good time. December 7 was another day. It was like in the morning, we had booming sounds, heavy smoke come out of the Pearl Harbor area. And we thought that something was very unusual because they don't burn sugar cane on Sundays. Plus the clouds were, the smoke was very heavy black, oil black. And booming sounds kind of scared us. All of a sudden, about a little after eight o'clock, we saw a marine dive bomber being shot, shot at by a zero fighters. Evidently, these dive bombers were coming on a, they were all probably on a patrol duty. And they probably didn't know what was going on until they saw the action being happening down below. Anyway, and all of a sudden, we were shot when one dive bomber was geometry level with heavy smoke coming out of the fuse lounge, and he knew he was, he was heavily damaged in the Zero Fighter. I knew it was Zero Fighter because it was black and senior in the fuse lounge. So he was still flying a three top level, and he knew he was, he was hit pretty badly, so <coughs> what he did was he put him the highest possible up in the air, and we saw him parachute down, and he came down below the heavy trees, and, uh, when he came down, we thought he was hurt, so we wanted to look for him, you know. He came rushing towards us, and he said, well, what's going on? I said, we were, we were thinking of asking him because he had a better sight of what, what was happening out there. But anyway, uh, we thought when he was Beach Park was very dangerous, so we had a truck take us to uh, try to get home at Evel Plantation. But the civil defense had the roadblock at Renton Road. We couldn't get back to our home, so he told the truck driver to go to the mountain, go up to Cunea Valley. But he, the truck driver saw walk planes come out of Wai'anae Range on the way back to Attack Pearl Harbor. So he got scared, so we wound up on Evo uh, Low Village next to Westlock. That, that was the wrong place to be because that was, Japanese walk planes were strafing that area. That's when we almost, I almost got killed because they were strafing uh, that village. So we had to hide underneath the homes and eventually we got home and I asked my father uh, what happened, why, you know. And he was very silent. He said, my father was, uh, he was, he was drafted into the Japanese army during war, during the Russian-Japanese war 102 years ago, I believe. And uh, although he was an alien, he was ordered to sign up for the World War I draft. And I have a, I have a, I have a, my father's registration card, draft registration card, World War I, he signed up on October 28, 1918. Of course, the war ended in November 11, I believe. And because he had served uh, in the Japanese Army, FBI came to my home and picked up my dad and took him to an internment camp at Honolulu. And, uh, 
We couldn't find out what happened during for a whole year because we were under martial law. We couldn't, we couldn't go to Fort Schwarz after. We could have been shot. So we kept silent for one year until they told us that he was an internment camp in Honduras. 